this lesson isn't anything new. It's just taking all the different lessons that we've learned, all the different types of um, solving that we've gone over, and explains to you when you may or may not want to use any one of them, because some of them are easier to use given certain different circumstances. So the first one that we did uh, back in Chapter 7 was factoring, and the best time to use factoring is when the equation can be factored easily. So you don't want to spend too much time factoring or trying to factor. If you try for a minute or two and it's not factorable, then you bail and you pick another method. Um, a disadvantage is that some equations are not factorable. So just because you can't factor it right away doesn't mean that it is factorable. It could be something that's not factorable and you're wasting your time. The next type of solving that we did was graphing in lesson 9.1, and that's when you can easily see the number of solutions. You may also want to use this technique when it's okay to approximate your answer. If you um, are trying to get the answer and it's a decimal, this is going to be a bad technique. Also, if you have access to a graphing calculator, obviously graphing is going to be quick for you to do. As I mentioned, one big disadvantage is that it may not give you the exact solutions. If you don't have a graphing calculator and the answers are not perfect integers, then this technique is a bad technique. The next type of solving that we did was using our square roots. And the setup for the equation was where it said x equals d, x squared equals d, where that middle term disappeared. Um, and obviously the a disadvantage is that this can only be used for equations that look like x squared equals d. Recently we also did this thing called completing the square. This technique is best used when the a value is 1 and the b is even because if you remember from completing the square we had to take half of the b and when the b is odd you are multiplication and your factoring gets very irritating. Um, completing the square can become difficult depending on how easy your numbers are to work with. And then lastly we use the quadratic formula and I told you that some people prefer this because you can use it for any quadratic equation and if your answer is a decimal and you need an exact answer, this is the one that you're going to want to use because it gives exact solutions. It takes a while to do the calculations. The formula is very involved, so it can take a while. But if you need those exact answers and your thing is not factorable, then this is the technique you want to use. Now it says that we have to solve the quadratic using different methods and it asks us to do it two different ways. Now obviously we should get the same answer no matter which method we use. Um, I'm going to use factoring and graphing. Um, if you want to use something else that's fine but those are my two preferred methods. So factor it is x plus 6, x plus 2. So this answer is x equals negative 6, and this answer is x equals negative 2. See how quick that was? When it's factorable, it's a piece of cake. So in order to graph it, I need to know where the vertex is. So I'll use my vertex formula, negative b over 2a. So that's negative 8 over 2 times 1. So the vertex is at x equals negative 4. All right, now I plug in my values. Negative 6 gives me 0, and I'll shortcut. Using symmetry, I know that negative 2 is also going to give me 0. Negative 5, I believe, gives me negative 3. And I'll shortcut, and that's also going to be negative 3. And when I plug in negative 4, I get negative 4. Okay. Negative.
y equals x squared plus 8x plus 12. And the solutions are right here. x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 2. And you can see those are the answers that I got earlier in the question. All right. In example two, I want you to try those on your own. You can pick any method you want. I'm certainly not going to show all the methods. I'll just pick the one that I would have used. Um, but if you use a different method, as long as your answer matches mine, then you've done fine. All right, here we go. Uh, letter A was not factorable, so you had to use one of the other techniques. I chose to use completing the square. Um, letter B technically is factorable. Um, if you wanted to use the factoring techniques where you have to split the middle or use your A and C groups, you could have done that. Technically, this was factorable if you wanted to, um, but I chose to use a quadratic formula because I wasn't sure if it was and I didn't want to waste my time, and I got 8 and negative 3 halves. So as long as your answer is matched mine, then you did very well.